Okay, good afternoon everybody. Thanks for being here. Uh, my name is Laura, as Javier said, and I'm going to present you the project that I've been doing with my colleagues here present, uh, Jordi and David, and our colleague Elena, which is the role that galleries that we find in hydroelectric plants <laughs> play for bats. And you might wonder, why should we care about the galleries that we can find in hydroelectric plants? So as the Spanish saying says, uh, una imagen vale más que mil palabras. Uh, a picture worth a thousand words, I'll just show you. So this is a, a gallery, the ones that we've surveyed. And these type of galleries provide bats the same um, characteristics that they look for when they are uh, looking for a place to breathe or swarm or hibernate because they have uh, quietness, darkness, relative humidity, so it's a, it's a perfect place as a natural case. But not only this. So these type of uh, habitats, so these galleries, are usually situated in privileged places because hydroelectric plants usually are far away from urban areas, usually are surrounded by nature. Like in this picture we can see there is always usually a water reservoir, so it's a perfect place for many bats to leave the roost and then just move to the foraging areas, which could be this water or water courses or some forest or meadows, pastures, etc. So having all this in mind, my colleagues uh, from the Centre Tecnològic Forestal de Catalunya decided to talk with Endesa. It's an electric company that we have here in Spain to start the project Endesa Bats with the main aim to evaluate the use of these galleries for bats and see how important they could be for their conservation. So we defined three my aims for this study. First of them was to see if these galleries are associated with a large uh, richness of a species and if we could find a big abundance of individuals. And among these bats, if some of them were the ones that are classified in Spain as vulnerable or threatened. Apart from that, we also wanted to see if the bat activity and bat presence was correlated with some particular characteristics from these galleries. So maybe the type of rock or the habitat surrounding these hydroelectric plants and the galleries. And the last aim as this is a, an hydroelectric plant that I might not know about conservation, we wanted to provide them with some uh, measures to me, uh, improve uh, the conservation of the bats that might be roosting in these tunnels and galleries. So our study was situated in Catalonia, in the central northern part of the, of the region. And we started these uh, surveys in 2013 until 2015, during every other summer and autumn. We visit seven, 37 localities, all of them from Endesa Company property, and they were distributed quite evenly in the, in the region. So how these hydroelectric plants and these galleries look like, really? So I will show you some examples. This is uh, El Pastoral and Susqueda Dam. And for instance, we have this natural cave that is in the area, and it's covered with these grills at the entrance. Then in the western part of the Catalan region, we found another type of uh, dam, which is in the Scalas. And here we have a, a habitat that is surrounded more with rocks and cliffs. And most of the galleries that are present there are not covered with any type of fences at the entrance, like the one you can see in the, in the picture. Then I would like also to special mention the Canellas Dam, because in this one it's not only uh, surrounded by uh, a natural and beautiful landscape, uh, basically trees and cliffs and rocks, but it also has a natural cave that was discovered during the time that the company was actually uh, building the, this particular dam. It's the photo on the top. Okay, and the last example is the tunnel that I've shown you at the beginning with the video. This is Camarasa, and again, it's a really nice habitat surrounded by bushes, trees, and this big uh, water reservoir just nearby the entrance of the cave tunnel. And at the bottom part, you can see how the entrance looks like. So the upper part is completely free for bats to enter. 
So what we do? So what we did was to take some measurements from the environment and from the physical characteristics of the tunnels. So keep in mind, as you saw in the map, that uh, our dams were in different altitudes. So you can see that they range it from 200 meters to more than 2,000 meters of altitude. So that's uh, a, a quite a big range. We also uh, checked the percentage of habitat that we could find surrounding these tunnels. So for instance, there was pastures, cliffs, um, maybe some riparian um, areas, some buildings as well. And we compared that with the GIS maps, so we could see the, the percentage of cover. We always use a buffer of 500 meters around each of these uh, hydroelectric plants. Apart from that, we measure the weight and the height of the entrances, as well as defining three types of entrances. So if it had grills that were uh, as small as we could ever define them, so that the distance between the bars was less than 13 centimeters, large, or without any type of uh, senses at the entrance. We also define the type of uh, rock that was made of these tunnels, so granite, limestone, uh, schist or cement. We also count all the holes that you can find in these galleries. That was quite a lot of a job to do, but we managed to do it. We also measure the maximum height within the tunnel, the length of the tunnel, and we measure also the relative humidity and the temperature. These uh, temperatures were the ones that we recorded during summer. So it's a uh, Range, a big range of temperatures, from 5 to more than 25 degrees. So how, we, how did we capture the batch? Mainly using hard traps that were placed at the entrance of these tunnels. In some particular cases, we also used mist nets, but mainly hard traps. And at the same time, we also placed some song meter 2 and 3 within some of these galleries. And why did we do that? Because on some of these dams, uh, and, gal and um, hydroelectric plants, they had a lot of entrances and galleries, so we were not able to check all of them at the same time. So while we were carrying on the captures in one place, we just put the detector in another one to make sure if there was some bad activity and if it was worth it going there and carrying on captures as well. When we got all the bats, we identified the species, we defined the we identify the age and the gender of the bats, and we also took some uh, wing punches because in some cases we found species that are a bit cryptic, like uh, Scalerae and Confermatereri or Mistacinus. So we send all this data to Doñana, and the species uh, have been confirmed, all of them. Okay, so what did we find? So we captured more than 700 individuals of 19 species of the 30 that we can find in Catalonia and they were using 75 of all the galleries that we surveyed, so that's quite a success. And which species then did we find? So we found 68% of them that were defined as generalist bats, and then 32% of them that are cave-dwelling species. I would like to point out some of these species. For instance, Rhinolophus depositors, that was the species that we captured the most. And then we also have uh, Minioptes and a particular species that most of you might know, it's uh, Plecotus macrobularis, which is an alpine species. But we found one individual, of course, in the dam that was in the highest altitude, so more than 2,000 meters, that was in uh, Tabascana. Where else? So if you see, some of these species are listed in the Catalogo Español de Especies Amenazadas as vulnerable and uh, dangerous. So all these species were also using these underground uh, tunnels and galleries. But that's not all. So as we compare the activity and presence of bats between summer and autumn, here we have the results from, from that information. So one of the things that Got more attention is the massive numbers of Rhinolophus hypocideros that they were present in most of the tunnels that we checked. And then we also have a couple of examples that we can compare between them. So for instance, the Aubentons were mainly found in January, well, they were only found in January uh, during summer, 
females and males, both of them. And then we have the case of Minioptrus, that they were basically found uh, during the autumn season, quite a lot of individuals as well. And then we have uh, Miotis cappuccini and Miotis scalari, that they have an opposite uh, use of these tunnels. So whereas cappuccini were found a lot of individuals, but in really few galleries, so maybe two or three of them, we have that uh, Miotis scalari will usually found few individuals, but always distributed in very, uh, with quite a lot of different tunnels and galleries. And finally, we did some generalized regression models comparing the environmental and physical characteristics of these tunnels. And we found that there were a positive correlation between the bad abundance of the cave dwelling bats in particular with the type of rock that it is kissed also with the relative humidity, and as well with the tunnels that didn't have any type of grilling at the entrance, and the white of the entrance, so the bigger, better. On the contrary, we found a negative relationship, uh, correlation between the uh, rocks that is uh, defined as a schist, and as well uh, with the galleries that had a, a small grilling entrance. I rem uh, just remember that the small one is the one that had grillings smaller than uh, 13 centimeters between each bar. So there was a, a less abundance. And finally, as well with the heterogeneity. So uh, water system had the most correlated uh, abundance with the bats positively, and as well as uh, less uh, significantly with meadows and fields. OK, so what can we sum up of? all this information that, yes, tunnels and uh, galleries that we can find in hydroelectric plants are perfect routes for bats. Uh, in particular, could be for vulnerable and endangered species, uh, for swarming as well. Here in this photo, we have a maternity colony of cappuccinis and miotis miotis with some pups. It's also interesting to mention that the biggest breeding colonies that we found were in the roost in the tunnels uh, that had the upper part of the entrance without any type of fence, like the one that I've showed you at the beginning. <coughs> so this also makes sense with the results that we shouldn't, uh, um, the presence of grills uh, reduce the presence and abundance of, of bats. What else? So bats have a preference for the tunnels that have the biggest, uh, the highest uh, altitude within the tunnels. And usually when there was the presence of bowels within these uh, tunnels, they were gathering all together in that particular part. As well, they prefer the skis and limestone rocks because are more natural, so they provide them with um, more uh, shelter, so crevices and cracks. As well as the relative humidity was also very important. And the habitat heterogeneity, so the more different type of habitats they can use for foraging, the more species we could find. And finally, as, I, as we promised, we also suggested some measurements to implement in the galleries and these tunnels from hydroelectric plants for, for bad conservation. So definitely one of the most important parts is to leave the upper part of these tunnels without any type of fencing. Ideally, just putting a fence five meters away from the entrance, as it's been said in the in the Eurobat uh, rules as well. What else? So these tunnels are used uh, a lot for the, um, the workers of the dams to check different things related with hydroelectric plants. So if we can control the number of visits that are exclusively necessary, that's also good for bats, as well as keeping the lights uh, most of the time switch off. And also some of these galleries uh, were only made of cement. So you could just create new crevices and new holes for the bats to use them if they are foraging in this particular type of tunnels. Other things that we could do, so we suggested uh, in this company as well to create new exit and entrance points. For instance, in this door that was completely sealed, we provided them with a new point for them to enter and go out. Because keep in mind that many of these galleries are a maze of tunnels, so bats could get easily lost inside there and they might 
have difficulties to find an exit point. So providing this type of uh, holes uh, can help them as well. As well uh, as modifying the airflow inside the tunnel. So this could help to have uh, the proper temperature for bats to breathe or for uh, spending the hibernating time there as well. One of the important things as well is I mentioned that the, these um, hydroelectric plants have a lot of tunnels. Some of them are not connected with the main tunnel system, but are there and nobody's using them. So we encourage the company to keep these tunnels as they are and probably just modifying a bit the fence at the entrance and let them uh, be there for bats to uh, roost there. And as well, within this uh, maze of corridors, sometimes they have these dead-end tunnels that are not used for anything as well. So just keep that part as a corner there that it's for bats, so without putting any type of light on it or without uh, visiting that part or leaving any equipment there, just leave it there for, for the bats to use it. Okay, so we are confident that with this data that we've been able to collect, uh, we have more information and we are being able to shed some light on the population dynamics of some species that we have in Catalonia. For instance, Capacini, as my colleague David explained to you yesterday. And we think that with all these um, measurements to improve uh, the conservation of bats in these galleries uh, can be implemented not only in Catalonia and in Andesa galleries, but maybe in other regions of Spain or even in other countries, as many of you are not from here. So we think that uh, collecting more information in this type of habitats could be interesting to know more about some of these uh, cave dwelling species that are less easy to follow and, <laughs> and study. And at the end, just protect them and <laughs> um, improve their conservation. So well, it's going faster. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention.